okay, the most important thing is that um, if we want to keep uh, global warming to not more than two degrees Celsius, or maybe even less, we can only burn so much coal or so much gas or so much oil. We have to keep it in the ground. We cannot burn more than 300 gigatons of carbon. So we have to stop using coal, oil and gas in the next 20, 30 years. So the question is, what replaces it? So solar energy, wind energy, nuclear energy, and perhaps hydropower. I would not say that the energy tradition becomes a major driver of innovation, but I would say that innovations could be the major driver of the energy tradition. So if we price carbon, so if we price emissions, so that if people burn more coal or burn more gas or burn more oil, they have to price, and you let the price rise over time, then it suddenly becomes exciting and interesting for businesses to develop new technologies, to become more efficient, to stop using coal, to stop using new energies that are clean, and it will drive a huge amount of technological progress in the new carbon-free economy. The free markets themselves, of course, they can be, they can, not the government. We have to rely on, the, on the, free, the free markets and we have to rely on businesses and entrepreneurs and scientists. But they're not going to do it uh, if you don't do anything. The government has to give the right conditions. So the government in many countries in the world subsidizes dirty energies like coal. There's a huge amount of subsidies for transport and for electricity which means that companies don't have the right incentive to develop new energies that are clean. So the first thing they do is have to get rid of all these subsidies for coal and oil and gas. They have to start taxing emissions. And then, of course, the money we get from the taxes, we can give back to the companies. But then they will really, you get a renaissance of new, new technological progress. And that will spur the energy transition, the transition out of coal, oil and gas, into solar, wind and fusion and nuclear. It's, the government has to provide the right conditions and give the right incentives for the private sector to take action. Just talking will not solve the problem. There must, there must be priced, it must be exciting and interesting for companies to invest in solar, wind and nuclear and, and whatever type of hydrocarbon energies Rather now, it's now it's interesting to invest in coal. That's very bad for the planet, will get very hot, and it's almost an existential threat for our planet. It's a very difficult question that which you ask because the problem is the sun shines sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. In Morocco it shines very often. In Morocco it's easier. In Marrakesh it's very easy. But in Germany the sun doesn't shine all the time. And the wind. Sometimes there's a lot of wind and sometimes there's no wind. So this is the problem of intermittence. So wind and, and solar energy always have to combine to have a stable form of energy. That could be nuclear energy or it could be uh, uh, the, 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 the hydro energy. And then if you combine it with that, then you get a stable supply of energy. Uh, the alternative is that we have to put a lot of uh, investment into new technologies for storing energy. So if we can store energy cheaply, then we can cope with the intermittence. We can cope with the wind going up and down and the sun being out and in. And then if we can store the energy when the sun shines, then we've got energy when there is no sun. So that's what we need, a lot of technological progress in as well.